gather today for Easter worship. So we first invite you to stand and greet those around you, you from your seat. <coughs> You guys can be seated. Ben's going to come up and share a couple of announcements. Actually, we both have a couple this morning, so. Good morning. Happy Easter. Uh, so, wow. Can we turn the uh, CM mic down a little bit? Normally, I can't even hear myself. Um, good morning. I wanted to make sure you were awake. Uh, so yesterday, we had our Easter extravaganza. Uh, so just a huge, huge thank you to all of the volunteers that were here yesterday, to all of the people that donated items for that. Uh, we were able to serve over 100 kids for the different trunks and egg hunts and things like that. So a uh, round of applause for all of the volunteers for that. Um, children's message today, just like yesterday, we're going to do a flower cross. The one that we did yesterday at Extravaganza is just outside this upper entry. Uh, so if the flower cross is a tradition family photo for you, uh, when you leave, just make sure you go out the upper entry doors and y'all can take a picture by that flower cross. Uh, high school youth nights will continue this Wednesday as normal, uh, 6.30 to 8 o'clock p.m. We'll uh, meet here at the upper entry and then uh, gather in the youth room for a devotion, discussion, some games, things like that. Uh, FNL, other known as Friday Night Lights, is this Friday open to all high school youth. We'll be doing a glow-in-the-dark Easter egg hunt. Uh, there will be candy, snack, toy, cash, and gift card prizes. Um, again, open to all high school youth and high school friends. Connect is Trinity's small group ministry. If you are interested in more information on that small group ministry, uh, stop by the Welcome Center and come chat with me after service. Our YouTube channel will be changing starting Wednesday. Um, so we've uploaded a lot of the videos from the previous channel to this new one. The new one is titled Trinity Franktown instead of Benjamin Swafford. Um, that's one of the main reasons we're changing it. Uh, we kind of just ran with it when we first started and didn't have time to look back. Now that we've got a little bit more time to catch our breath and pace with the videos, uh, we're transitioning that over. Uh, so this Wednesday's video will be sent from that channel. So if you click on that link, and I'll describe it in the video, um, just subscribe to it, turn on the notifications to make sure that you continue to get those. Uh, they'll still be sent in the same kind of link posted on Facebook the same way as normal. Uh, you'll just see a picture and a name change on the top of that. Um, and then we are on Facebook. This is where you can catch any of our upcoming events, services, uh, Bible verse of the week, the occasional prayer, videos, things like that. Um, so make sure to go over to Facebook and like us there. Pastor Mike. Just a reminder, the offering is in the back that we don't pass any offering plate during this time. Uh, as you leave, you can put your offering in. Just want to also let you know that our school and our preschool are both uh, open enrollment right now. So if you know any kids or uh, related to any of them, come have them talk to us. There's more information on the uh, table as you leave today. I also want to introduce you to a, a young man. Uh, you know, in, in my calling, one of the things I love about it is we always talk about how much we touch and change people's lives. But I can literally point to people and say, here's a young person's life that you've changed forever. This is Stevenson. Stevenson's uh, father abandoned him when he was born. His mother cannot, could not feed him and take care of him nor educate him. So this week, by supporting our ministry, you have saved Stevenson's life, and he is now part of our orphanage in Haiti. So we thank God for our, our new child to our orphanage. This week, we're going to start off with a litany reading together. On the first day of the week, the Word of God tells us that the woman got up early to go to the tomb to anoint the body of Jesus with spices. On Friday, they were unable to do it because of the Sabbath and Passover restrictions. I wonder what went through their minds as they walked. Matthew tells us that Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting across from the tomb when the stone was rolled away. What was their plan and what were their thoughts? When they saw the stone was moved and later heard the angels tell them that he is not here. He has risen. What are our thoughts this morning? 
No matter what is going on in our lives, Easter has a message of hope and joy for us. Hope is alive. Christ is risen. New life is possible. Is Forgiveness is real. Is Love is stronger than death. Is Sorrow and mourning will have an end. Is Light overcomes darkness. Is Our salvation is secure. Is we are here today to proclaim that no matter how dark the world gets, no matter how rampant immortality seems to run, no matter how many times it looks that Satan has won, that is a lie. Jesus Christ is risen and he is right here today, here to cleanse our sins, here to touch our lives, here to change our eternal destinies. And because he lives, we too shall live forever. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us stand together and sing. Christ is risen today. Please join me in prayer. God of such amazing surprises and infinite joy, as you appear to the two Marys who were hurrying on the road to tell the good news to the disciples, so come and meet us here. May your presence fill us with hope, overwhelm us with joy, and transform us with purity. We are here this day, Father, for we want to see and worship our resurrected Lord. Amen. You may be seated, and we invite the children to come forward for the children's message. Happy Easter, guys.
So as you can see, our cross is kind of bare, right? But that's kind of how it was when people woke up on the first Easter morning, on that Sunday morning. They woke up and it was still sad. It was still dark. People were still hurting from Jesus' death on the cross. But later that day is when they went to the tomb and realized that it was empty. Talk about confusing, right? You go and you expect to see something, and it's totally different. How many of you guys have gone somewhere or gotten something and you expected one thing, but it was nothing like what you expected? Me too, right? And that's quite a surprise. And that's what they felt on that Easter morning later on. And then an angel told him, he's not here. He is risen. Just like he told you, he is risen. And that is the glorious promise of Easter. That is why we get to celebrate. And so our tradition here is that we're going to put a couple flowers on the cross. And we're going to do it at every single service. And by the end of our last service, this cross will be full of flowers to represent the new life that we get through Jesus. So. Uh, I'm going to have you guys each grab or I'll hand you a couple of flowers. Uh, we'll do two or three each, and you can put it anywhere on the cross that you can reach, um, somewhere on the front so we can see the bright color of life. Cool? All right, let's decorate it. As they do that, we're going to join in a litany recounting God's goodness. Let's take a moment and recount the ways God has always provided for his people. Please join me in responsive proclamation of God's glory. Every time we say that morning is broken, we want you to shout back, God is good. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And there was evening and there was morning. Morning had broken. The waters of the flood subsided. And Noah and his family left the ark. Today, together with all the living creatures, each with his own family. Morning had broken. Jacob awoke from his dream and said, There is none other than the house, this is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Morning has broken. All the night the Lord drove the sea back with an east wind. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, while their enemies perished in the depths. Morning had broken. Young David rose early and left the sheep with a keeper to take provisions to his brothers where a Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, came forth to challenge him. Morning had broken. Elijah fled east of the Jordan as the Lord directed him, and ravens brought him bread and meat. Morning had broken. In answer to Ezekiel's prayer, the night of the angel of the Lord struck down 185,000 in the camp of the Assyrians. Morning had broken. Very early on the first day of the week, where the sun had arisen, they went to the tomb. When they looked up, they saw the stone had been rolled away. Morning had broken. The Lord is risen. risen Let's sing responsibly. The doxology? Oh, okay. <laughs> That's okay. We're going to sing it. She was ready with the next hymn and wasn't ready that. Let's, oh, you got it? continue with our next hymn, The Day of Resurrection. Thank you. 
we stand together? Praise to God the Father. All oh, praise to God the Son. All oh, praise to God the Spirit. Eternal three in one. The ransom number all down before the throne. The Holy Gospel for this Easter Sunday comes from the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to him, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stopping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there, and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. When Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, as she wept, she stood to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white. Where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to him, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending my Father and to your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. So much has changed since last Easter. The world has been shaken. Life has been disrupted. What we once called normal seems like it may never return. It's been easy to be discouraged, to lose hope, to feel the foundations of our faith begin to crumble. It's hard to keep our feet planted when the ground beneath feels like shifting sand. Now more than ever, we need to stand on the truth of Easter, a day which changed our eternity, changed our world forever. Death was defeated by life. Sin was consumed by mercy. The grave was swallowed up by victory. See, even in the darkest of moments, the love of Jesus could not be stopped. His faithfulness could not be broken. And when the dust settled, Jesus, he stood alive and victorious. Today, may we remember the truth of Easter, the power of the resurrection, 
and the promise of eternity. Yes, the world has been shaken, but the grave, it's still empty. And Jesus, he's still risen. Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied on you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we pray that, Lord God, that your spirit would move freely through us this morning. That you would shake us, rattle us, Lord God, and wake us up again to the tremendous fact that your resurrection has changed everything. Not only for the world, not only for history, but for us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So we're going to do a, a little bit of uh, a, an interactive sermon this morning in some ways. So when I say in, in this kind of form, this, you're going to say all together, out loud changes everything, okay? Now, I know you're Lutherans and you know you don't talk in church unless I'm giving you the right, all right? So if I say this, you say Wow, you sound like Good Friday. Let's try it again. This. All right. Fire. We can easily, yeah, you're ready. <laughs> we can easily picture a man in, in a cave shivering, eating raw meat and vegetables. And, and maybe perhaps lightning strikes and all of a sudden, fire happens, and the man realized now they could cook food and stay warm. We know that with fire, this, the wheel. Sometimes later, they, they invented the wheel. And all of a sudden, they no longer had to be a nomadic people in which they followed the animals around and, and waited to kill one and had to stay there. But now they could actually kill animals, put them in something, and wheel them to where they live. For them, this written language. Around 3000 BC, they began to write language down. And for the first time, they no longer just have to tell stories and remember them for years and generations handed down. It's about the time of Moses and Moses pens for the first time the book of Genesis. And this, when we learn that the earth revolves around the sun instead of the opposite way, for years in science, we thought that everything revolved around us. And then we learned that the earth revolves around the sun. And then we realized that we are only a pale blue dot in the midst of all that God has created out there. And this, the printing press in 1440, Gutenberg develops the printing press. And all of a sudden now the, the written spoken word can be multiplied. It actually is the very reason that Luther ever had success in the Reformation because they could print it and he put those 95 theses on the door and, and he didn't know what was going to happen because somebody else took it down and they had it printed and spread throughout the empire. And this, like electricity in a light bulb, what more do you have to say? It changed everything about our lives. This, the automobile in the 1900s, Henry Ford, Henry Ford said that I will build a car for the multitudes. And in 1908, he did, building 15.5 million cars. And, and because of the, the line, the assembly line that he created, they began to manufacture cars once every 24 minutes. Prior to that, it was once every 12 hours. For us, this the airplane. At the same time, on the sandy beaches of Kitty Hawk, on December 17th, 1903, at 10.45 in the morning, two brothers with a small powered engine put a plane to flight for 12 seconds. 120 feet is all they went. But that one accomplishment in many of our lives would what? This. Computers and the internet. Growing up, I never had such a thing. They developed it in the 80s and 90s. It was just part of our lives. And now the internet changes the way we do everything in this world. This, 
a pandemic stops a world in its tracks. We're in lines for toilet paper. We're in lines and going in the store fighting over pasta. Right now, countries are still closed. Germany and France have reclosed their countries because of a new strand. For us right now, this one moment in time, we can honestly say that what? This, but of all the momentic events in history, there's nothing that changed the world more than this day. The life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ literally changed everything. In fact, we break the calendar up on the basis of the life of Christ. We look at our world through the lens of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And for us, those words, he is risen, are a watershed moment in history. They're life-changing. It's the whole reason you're here today. Because without the resurrection of Jesus, it's virtually impossible for us to believe this movement would have spread worldwide. In fact, St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, if not for the resurrection of Jesus Christ, everything that we believed in is in vain. Everything that we hoped in has no meaning. If they had ever found the bones of Jesus, we'd have to rewrite our faith. On this one event, the entire world changes forever. This is not just another day. It's a radical transformation. Christ's resurrection makes the Christian church. It, it baptizes it into a brand new dawn. And, and on this day, billions of Christians around the world, in a world of, I don't know, seven, we haven't hit eight billion yet, but a world of seven billion Christians, half of those upon this planet in some way, have professed Christ. The resurrection of Jesus changes everything for us. Changes the face of humanity. The transforming power that, that Christ walked out of the grave. There is no, nothing in the world, no single event in all of human history has changed more lives around the world than this one. You're not just gathering in church today for another Sunday. You're literally gathering to celebrate an event that changed everything. Changed your course of history. Changed the course of history for millions of lives through the ages, has given hope to the hopeless, joy to those who didn't have it. And the sign of the Christian faith is not a cross, although we like to wear them and put them in our churches. But the sign of the Christian faith is God now living out his life through you. I was in college and I had a class, Philosophy of Religion. And in this class, we couldn't, we had to argue different theological themes, but we couldn't use the Bible. And so we had to use, argue the existence of God, the, the problem of evil. I remember being in that class in college, and there were some atheists in that class, and man, they would get up and argue, especially one girl. There's times that we, it was one of those classes, you almost think it's a Harvard class. You'd come in with coffee, you'd sit around this big table, and you'd argue the big questions of life. There's times this gal actually climbed up on the table, went on all fours, all fours, right up to me, right up to my face, and yelled at me, there is no God. There is no resurrection of the dead. There is no God. That seemed to go on all semester. I just loved her and kept telling her Jesus loved her. Following semester, she walks up to me one day and she says, Mike, you need to go to chapel tomorrow. I said, what? You're telling me to go to chapel? 
She says, yeah, you need to be there tomorrow. I walked in. And on that day, she got baptized as a Christian. And he said, why? Why did you finally change after you were so radical as an atheist? She said, because nothing I did rattled you. No matter how I screamed, you loved me. And you always just sat there and rationalized with me. That the resurrection actually and the death of Christ not only only makes sense. You can argue using any modern models uh, of debate. There's that much evidence. That these guys who were terrified, hiding out, hiding away, that it would change their lives. These guys who were scared to death. After the resurrection would stand before kings and willingly give their lives. This one event changed everything for them. It took men who were uneducated, who later would stand before kings and the book of Acts would say, uh, of these men, these men who have upset the world have come here also. These men who were uneducated and later we debate over whether they even wrote some, wrote some of the letters of the Bible because they were written by men who were too well educated. It changed their lives. See, this moment is a hinge point the watershed moment for everything we believe. The transforming power of Jesus Christ began in an empty grave. The resurrection gives us hope. And in the gospel of Mark, like every other gospel, the women are surprised to see the empty tomb. But God's intention all along was that the world never be left alone. That you'd never be left to your own chaos. That there was hope and purpose in the chaos. There is hope for the unemployed person who's struggling to feed their son and daughter. There's hope for the teenager who's lonely and bullied in school and tempted with self-loathing. There's hope for the addict who struggles with a way out. There's a hope for the family that's left homeless by a disastrous earthquake. There's hope for the child who has lost their parents. There's hope for the wife who has lost their husband. There's hope for the press who felt like life is worthless. Because God is alive. Because God is alive, this. Oh, you almost got it. This. Because God is alive, it changes our history. It it wraps us around us that life doesn't come to an end. That life doesn't end when your body goes in the ground. But actually, life begins. The real life that you were created for. The life that God ordained in the garden that we lost of sin is actually the life that begins in the afterlife. And a personal relationship with the Messiah changes everything. And he brings a peace in our lives, not just this peace that's the absence of war, but peace that surpasses all human understanding. Because this, do not despair. God is alive. God is faithful. Look at Peter. Peter who denied his Lord three times, and yet... In the resurrection, when they go to the angel, the angel says, go tell the disciples. And and you know what? Make sure you tell Peter. Because when you think all hope is lost, this. And Paul, Paul, who sacrificed so much, who was whipped, tortured, battered, beaten, and broken. He could go on to write this, Jesus Christ who's died who has been raised to life, is at the right hand of God interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble? Shall hardship? Shall persecution? Shall nakedness, peril, or sword? No, I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor demons, nor things present nor things past, 
nor any powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, ever, because of the resurrection. Because of the resurrection. This, in Jesus' name, amen. Let us stand for prayer. Heavenly Father, God of all mercy and grace, we thank you for this day. For in this day, our eternities are sealed. In this day, our hearts are wrapped, Lord God. That we stand at the grave of loved ones or when anyone stands in the future at our graves, we can announce, Lord God, that life has not ended. Life is, death has not won. Because Jesus Christ's grave is empty, so will ours be. Bless us this day as we celebrate the goodness and grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, Lord God, and, and celebrate that this Easter, Bill Fromm is actually celebrating Easter eye to eye and face to face. And everything that he's ever hoped for and dreamt or believed is now a reality right before him. Lord God, as all of our loved ones gathered around your throne, we gather and we celebrate with them the resurrection of the Lamb of God. We pray, Father, that you be with Judy as she goes in for surgery tomorrow on her foot. Bless the hands who minister to her. We ask all these things in the precious name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please join me in the service of Holy Communion. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of the altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, upon us, and lead us to everlasting life. Almighty God and merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children, and gather us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins, and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, our Lord took bread, broke and blessed it, and gave to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also, he took the cup after he had supped, and when he had given thanks, he blessed it. And gave to them, saying, Take and drink ye all of it. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. As we pass out the elements this morning, just a reminder that the green stickers are gluten-free wafers, and then there are uh, yellow stickers are non-alcoholic uh, for the communion part, or the wine part of the communion. You may be seated.
please just hold the elements and we'll take them together. Please remove the top of the wafer. Take and eat the body of Christ broken for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Now remove the top of the wine. Take and drink the blood of Jesus Christ poured out for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. We'll come in now, now and receive the extra. We stand together. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you have fed us with the body and blood of your Son. And that in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we know that this seals our forgiveness, that the sacrifice of Good Friday has been accepted. And we now stand before you as God's forgiven children. For that, we give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Receive now the blessing. Lord bless you and keep you. Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious unto you. Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his everlasting peace. Amen. Now there's only one way to sing this next hymn. And that's nice and loud. If you ever come to the, if I ever have a funeral and you ever come to it, this better be sung at it. So let's sing nice and loud.
Have a blessed Easter. We go in his peace and serve the Lord. You may be seated.